So welcome to all of you. Um, it is a great pleasure today to introduce you our uh, distinguished guest, uh, who is Mr. Dilior uh, Kakimov, um, ambassador of the Republic of Uzbekistan to King of Belgium and a mission of, uh, uh, of Uzbekistan to the EU. Um, Mr. Kakimov, it is a great pleasure having you on board today. Um, we're also celebrating this year, of course, the 30th anniversary of uh, the independence of Uzbekistan. Um, so the question is mainly like, um, how uh, has Uzbekistan evolved in those past 30 years? And what do you consider as its main achievements? Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon, dear Lynn. Good afternoon, uh, dear colleagues from the European Institute of Asian Studies. I really uh, honored uh, to be uh, your speaker today, your guest. And uh, thank you uh, for this opportunity. I would like just to underline, as you rightly mentioned, that Uzbekistan is celebrating the 30th anniversary of independence this year. It's a major uh, breakthrough moment in our uh, very uh, deep history. And uh, Uzbekistan became independent exactly 30 years ago through very strong struggle for uh, which was kind of inherited in the DNA of our nation. There were sometimes, as in the life of any other uh, country, but uh, I think uh, this anniversary should be uh, remembered the 30 years of independence because it also uh, when one generation grown up under the new flag, new anthem, and the leadership of our country. And um, I think the major significantly important point that uh, Uzbekistan today is uh, standing on its own legs, uh, it's really independent it, in uh, formulating its own destiny, destiny of the nation, the biggest nation in Central Asia. Um, during this short time of period, our Republic has implemented many comprehensive measures at building a democratic state which is based on the rule of law, strong civil society, economic development, the creation of conditions for the peaceful and prosperous life for the people. And that it became even more important under the stewardship, leadership of our president, uh, His Excellency Shafat Mirziyoyev. This year we're also going to undergo the presidential cycle elections in, on October 24th. And um, we can stress that since the president uh, Mirziyev has launched an ambitious large-scale reform in Uzbekistan. The country has changed beyond recognition in terms of its own uh, activities, ideas, and steps, should it be foreign or domestic policies. And uh, you know, the 30 years of independence is uh, also the time when we should look a little bit, reflect uh, where we stand now and what we are going to do. Uh, in, in years to come. And uh, uh, I think that one of the greatest points were made by our country uh, during at least the last five years, the advancements of reforms that were initiated by President Shafat Mishidio. And in short, I can say that the major motto that was uh, put uh, in front of every citizen, every public office in our country was that not the people to serve the state institutions or what we say, organs, agencies, but the state institutions uh, should face the needs of our people. And that's what is motivates, motivates our embassy, motivates, I think, any other state agencies in, in our country. Um, speaking about the, I would say, international agenda, uh, Uzbekistan contributed greatly on the initiatives of our president uh, to many United Nations resolutions, documents. Uh, they are also organizing global and regional forums with very specific aim to reflect the needs of people of our country, needs of the people of the region, but also uh, reflect the needs of the uh, global audience. Should it be, yeah. And what do you see as like the main challenges or potential of Uzbekistan at this point? And how can this actually be addressed? 
Uh, there are a number of challenges, uh, and uh, they uh, descend from our geographical, I would say, position, because you know Uzbekistan is a unique, mm -hmm. uh, it's only the second country in the world, which is double landlocked, another one is Liechtenstein. Uh, but if to compare with uh, this league, we are most populous country in the Central Asia, almost 35 million people. They are scarce on certain resources, resources like uh, water resources. The logistical issues, harsh climatic challenges, you know, one of the biggest uh, tragedies in the world that we faced even before the uh, global climate agenda became known for the rest of the world. I mean, and uh, became the main issue in the uh, uh, different international forests, the RLC tragedy, the disappearance of the uh, first largest uh, freshwater uh, uh, reservoir in the world. That, that kind of challenge is really putting a lot of uh, pressure on our social and economic development. There are also other challenges like uh, finding the peace in neighboring uh, Afghanistan, for example. Yeah. Um, these are rather uh, big challenges, of course. Um, so who do you see as the, the main cooperation partners for Uzbekistan to actually address these issues? And what is the role of the EU in all of this? I think the uh, modern world gained enough resources, but also the different international platforms for cooperation, should it be bilateral or multilateral. And of course, uh, the first and the only universal global institution is United Nations. And uh, uh, there are many uh, outlets under the UN umbrella. You know, Uzbekistan became, uh, uh, was uh, elected to the uh, United Nations Human Rights Council in Uzbekistan. It's one of the challenges that uh, uh, universal to every country. We, we should also pursue our values and enforcing them through different uh, uh, means. But there are also bilateral partners, and in that sense, uh, uh, European Union is our biggest and one of the most important uh, partners among the others. Uh, if you want to uh, follow the, our foreign policies or our priorities, it's a really very pragmatic approach of uh, current government and uh, I would say it's uh, based on very simple calculus. As I said, this, the state in Uzbekistan, the public offices are uh, to serve the needs of the people. It's job creations, eleva elevation of the uh, level of uh, living standards for our people. So our economic engagement with foreign partners like neighboring countries, Central Asia, is utmost priority, but there are also major global powers like Russia, China, European Union. And when it comes to the European Union, it's of course of the uh, utmost importance. Uh, during the last four years, our trade turnover with the European Union doubled. It was to the four billion US dollars, and uh, it's our first biggest uh, trading partner. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really important for the big stuff. And I mean, of course, EU-Uzbekistan relations have come a very long way, especially in the past 30 years. Um, right. So, I mean, how is the EU actually perceived in Uzbekistan? Like, what do Uzbek people think of the EU and how, how do they look at it? And I mean, also, like, what can we expect from EU-Uzbekistan relations in the future? And what are the priorities on, like, the agenda for cooperation there? The European Union is, uh, I would say, very close partner, not only on political terms and on the highest level of uh, communication. It's also well known, I mean, through general public audience, through ordinary people. And in many, uh, I would say, communal uh, things, it's like European standards that are setting the rules for our people to uh, pursue. And that's a very interesting thing because, uh, you know, uh, when you think globally, what is European U Union all about? What are the values of the European Union? We do understand that there are certain things where EU is leading 
uh, on the global stage is setting the standard, for example, for decarbonization, green deal, climatic sensitiveness, uh, 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 rules of general governance. That's the standard. But on the ordinary level, even among the people, especially in Uzbekistan, and I would say maybe on the largest scale in many uh, countries of our region and uh, beyond it, the European Union is perceived as something that is leading the globe, leading the people around the globe to set certain standards of not only behavior, but also of the living, of the um, uh, setting the goals for the next day. And in that sense, it's a, a very unique position, and uh, 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 we are good partners with the uh, uh, European Union, Tashkent and Brussels are working very closely, as you rightly mentioned, for about 30 years. But uh, it should be noted uh, and given due assessment that uh, indeed after the election of our president, uh, Shavkat Mirziyoyev, to the office in uh, December 2016, those cooperation uh, uh, is uh, became of utmost importance. We uh, enjoyed full cooperation on both sides, European Union, Republic of Uzbekistan. Uh, we are close, if not to say, daily contact on different levels, political, economic, people to people, uh, contacts educationally wise. We really appreciate the opportunities that are uh, given by, for example, Erasmus program. We have the national office of Erasmus plus in, uh, in, in Tashkent. Uh, Tashkent also cho chosen as a, a center of excellence for the chemical, uh, biological, and some other materials to safeguard the security in um, some radioactive material. I mean, you name any of those uh, points of uh, daily life and uh, you will find that Uzbekistan and the European Union are global partners and they're very trusted partners. I mean, we can also see like a renewed uh, interest on the EU side for Uzbekistan and Central Asia in general. Um, that also I mean, translated, of course, in the EU's uh, Central Asia strategy of 2017. But I think overall, I mean, the EU's footprint and presence in the region and in Uzbekistan is still rather low. So how can actually the EU push its engagement and, and its presence in the region? And what would be expected, um, I mean, from your side and from the Uzbek and Central Asian side towards the EU in, in I mean, in supporting the region in, in further developing? Well, uh, I would not agree on one uh, very important point that you mentioned, that uh, footprint of EU is very low in, um, in Uzbekistan, uh, in, uh, as you said, in Central Asia as a whole. Uh, there are many reasons for, for my, I would say, polite disagreement. Uh, one of the points is that uh, EU opened the last among the five Central Asian states office in Turkmenistan in, uh, if I'm not mistaken, July uh, uh, 2019. So, European Union is well represented in all five Central Asian countries, including Uzbekistan. Uh, starting uh, year 2007, um, on the initiative of Germany and then uh, uh, Federal uh, Foreign Minister of Ger Germany, His Excellency Mr. Steinmeier, EU uh, introduced a special instrument, the uh, European Union Strategy for Central Asia. Now we are in the third cycle, 2021, uh, 2027, when the European Union is giving the full attention to the needs and cooperation with Central Asian states, and this is kind of double track. Uh, uh, political agenda when you have regional ideas and programs and what is important also the financial needs to implement those programs and also you have uh, bilateral uh, national based uh, projects and programs and, uh, those two is I mean strategy for Central Asia applies definitely for uh, uh, Central Asia State to all of our countries and it also uh, being implemented in Uzbekistan on, on this uh, double track, we have uh, benefits and cooperation under the regional programming, and we have also our cooperation on bilateral level with the European Union. So this year is the first year when uh, uh, we start this uh, third 
cycle uh, in, in uh, some population strategy uh, uh, for of the European Union. So uh, I think uh, in that sense, European Union is well represented and um, it has its footprint also uh, uh, on the wider audience. If you will allow me, I, I should also mention that uh, this year, starting April 10th, uh, Uzbekistan became a uh, beneficiary of GSP Plus instrument of the European Union. Uh, which means that Uzbekistan is eligible now, our producers uh, and exporters uh, are eligible to supply uh, 6,200 different uh, products on the European uh, market at the uh, zero level uh, taxation. And that's really important stage. So, uh, and how will this impact EU Uzbekistan trade relations? And like, who will be the main? Stakeholders and, bene um, and who will benefit the most in the, in the um, uh, business community, but also uh, beyond that. Well, uh, I think there will be a uh, wide range of be beneficiaries in terms of our bilateral trade turnover, and I mean not only Uzbek producers and exporters, because what is Uzbekistan is capable to do is to supply really uh, good quality products which do not harm the interest, for example, of the European producers. And uh, one of the uh, important observations that we are not kind of competitive uh, producers to the European uh, colleagues or European member states in the sense. Uh, what we are offering is really of the great need in uh, uh, European member states themselves. I, will, I, will, I would mention at least one industry, textile industry, and Uzbekistan is uh, well known for the uh, good organic uh, production of uh, cotton. And that's uh, where uh, they are really not competing with any of the European uh, producers. So, uh, and Uzbekistan is ready to supply semi finished or finished products, garments, the European consumers on very competitive price, high quality, uh, this observation of, of the labor standards organic products and uh, that should benefit also the uh, retailers and uh, suppliers uh, 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 in the European Union. And uh, by our count, at least 300 million of US dollar products could be uh, sold easily per year uh, per annum from Uzbekistan to the uh, member states of EU. And we want to make it very even because you know European Union is a union of uh, different states Eastern Europe, Southern Europe, uh, you have Central uh, Europe, you have uh, some Northern states so we are working on the daily basis with different countries throughout our uh, diplomatic missions throughout our trade missions and we really are looking forward uh, how we can uh, uh, make this uh, uh, supply chain very sustainable resilient and uh, in terms of uh, benefiting both sides if you go for the uh, kind of digesting what is the uh, overall eu big standard on uh, trade uh, turnover comprises usually only 10 percent of our exports to eu and 90 percent of uh, imports from the european Member states to Uzbekistan. This is largely uh, machinery, uh, good quality products, uh, and we want more balance in our uh, overall basket of uh, trading relations with Europe. Well, it seems as if um, Uzbekistan is greatly going to benefit from that. Do you also see some challenges involved in the process? Well, uh, uh, GSP Plus is uh, not, I would say, a uh, very uh, simple. Uh, instrument in terms of uh, supplying goods. There is also uh, a lot of commitments that uh, Uzbekistan as a state taken up on before becoming uh, uh, part of this uh, European instrument and uh, that is a uh, subscription to 27 different international conventions under the United Nations including the protection uh, of labor rights, uh, human rights, there are some uh, documents where we uh, take the responsibilities for the safeguarding of the biodiversity 
uh, also fighting the corruption. So in that sense, it's uh, not the challenges, it's uh, the rules that uh, should be uh, implemented throughout the country, at least in Uzbekistan. And uh, uh, we are fully committed. We are not only subscribed, but also fully committed to implement uh, those uh, uh, documents. It's not because of GSP+, Plus. it's our general uh, commitment and aspiration within the global framework of uh, global values. And uh, Uzbekistan definitely uh, under the stewardship uh, of our president is uh, going uh, throughout this uh, very difficult but also very needed uh, part of re reforms and uh, I'm quite sure that we will be successful and uh, they are ready for any kind of cooperation on the uh, international uh, arena. As you know, uh, one of the difficult parts for many years were kind of misunderstanding on uh, uh, some of our partners, how the agricultural sector, how the economy is running, and we are fully transparent in that sense, and we are very closely working with the International Labour Organization and many other institutions. Um, you're also trying to um, get accession to the World Trade Organization. Um, how is that right. person going and, and to what extent can, for example, the EU or other partners help you out in um, reaching that goal? Well, uh, thank you, uh, Lin. You're uh, quite familiar with our bilateral relations and our global agenda. Indeed, that's very true. Uzbekistan resumed uh, its negotiations within uh, UNWTO um, working groups last year. Uh, again, it was uh, last summer, 2020, uh, July, when uh, we, uh, after the 15 years of the break, we resumed our contacts and uh, uh, cooperation with, uh, within the working group of Session of Uzbekistan to WTO. We are very much grateful uh, to the European Union because uh, European Union was among the first international partners to fully support our aspirations and our engagement with WTO. <coughs> and beyond that, uh, uh, we are benefiting from the financial and technical support. There is uh, uh, 5 million euros were allocated for the uh, project uh, to enhance institutional capacity of Uzbekistan during the negotiations with this uh, very important international tool organization and um, uh, we are uh, very much in touch uh, with our European partners on different aspects of negotiations you know WTO by itself it's a global set of different rules where you go through the number of different interactions uh, primarily through the negotiations on trade and service issues with your counterparts uh, European Union is uh, represented on the level of member states through WTO, but uh, general guidance policies and uh, uh, kind of uh, negotiating uh, points, uh, from my understanding, are being uh, coordinated among the EU member states. And that's good because we, as I said before, uh, enjoy very good uh, relationship, very trust partnership with the European Union. And this is kind of most valued currency in international agenda. I mean, of course, the past year and a half, we have been facing the COVID-19 pandemic. How has that actually impacted EU-Uzbekistan relations and also like developments in Uzbekistan? Well, uh, I mean, global pandemic, when you, you, you say global, it's, it's really global. Huh? It's a corona that happened, affected every living, uh, 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 living organism on, on that level because we even first out about the, this uh, uh, disease is being spread among some animals. So uh, it's really one of the biggest challenges, um, I would say, in this century, as we can see for now. And uh, it has its own uh, cost and price uh, for the states, for the human beings, because it's taken many lives in many instances. Uh, it has also negative impact in terms of our bilateral uh, uh, relations with the European Union. But I, I would like also to say that uh, even through this uh, global pandemic, Uzbekistan and EU, EU member states were 
in very close contact and cooperation. I just uh, fondly remembering the phone conversation be between uh, President of the European Council, uh, His Excellency Charles Michel, with uh, uh, our President, His Excellency Shafat Mirziyev, uh, in May last year. We had a number of interactions on the lower levels, and Uzbekistan, to say honestly, was uh, one among the international partners of the European Union to send the humanitarian aid to one of the member states. And in particular case, it was Hungary, where we dispatched the, uh, our um, first kind of airplane this, when the pandemic was uh, just starting. Um, and also the European Union was actively helping us and relieving some emergency funds uh, for the purpose of mitigating the consequences of uh, pandemic and uh, we very much appreciate the um, uh, direct budget support uh, from the EU uh, to uh, mitigate, as I said before, social, economic uh, and even medical consequences. We have also uh, some funds uh, uh, available through this uh, EU support to WHO and uh, we really appreciate it. At the later stage of the pandemic, uh, Ubiqsan is also uh, receiving some uh, uh, vaccines through a uh, global program of uh, COVAX. And uh, we know that the European Union is one of the biggest uh, uh, donors to this uh, international program. In terms of uh, bi bilateral trade investment and so on, we never stop. And uh, we've seen a number of uh, different interactions. Uh, through the modern communication tools. As I said, uh, April 10th, Big Sun became fully eligible for GSP Plus, but it was the uh, shortest, and uh, as I was told by many of my European partners, uh, most efficient and effective uh, accession, because after the five years in the polls, Big Sun became the ninth uh, international partner of the uh, European Union to accept this. And that was done in very short time, it's less than one year. Okay. So, um, what else can we expect in the next couple of years of uh, well, developments in EU uh, Uzbekistan relations and Central Asia in general? I mean, can the EU support also like more regional uh, integration in Central Asia? Or like what else, I mean, what would be the three or five top priorities that we could expect um, in the next couple of years? Well, the, the, thank you. I, I really appreciate uh, the, this uh, thorough uh, interest of uh, European Institute of Asian Studies uh, in our bilateral relations with the European Union. It's uh, not many of uh, think tanks that pay that much attention to the rise of uh, uh, Central Asia, and uh, I appreciate your question. Indeed, uh, in coming years, we uh, uh, very much have a uh, uh, positive agenda for our relations with, uh, with Brussels, with European Union, with uh, uh, different member states of the EU. As you know, uh, uh, most of the member states are well represented in our country, of the EU, I mean, I mean uh, at part with uh, the delegation of the European Union, we have a uh, very good uh, uh, ambassador from the European Union, very professional one, uh, her name is uh, Charlotte Adrian. Uh, she was uh, recently appointed and she started with uh, very active uh, promotion of bilateral uh, ties. The timing is very right because uh, we are also discussing uh, enhanced partnership, uh, partnership and cooperation agreement uh, between Uzbekistan and the European Union that should um, substitute the outdated document analog, uh, which is going back to 1996, is what I've uh, ventured past, and the realities around us as well as ourselves have uh, changed uh, quite dramatically, I would say. European Union is uh, much more eager in terms of uh, membership, but also more efficient and more stronger economically uh, and politically. This big sun, as we said uh, today at the beginning, is celebrating 30 years of independence. We, uh, we have a uh, very clear, very transparent uh, agenda, international agenda, global life agenda, where the peace and prosperity, common prosperity of, the, of Central Asia and our partners 
uh, is being kind of uh, uh, promoted as the major focus. And in that sense, uh, I think one of the biggest expectations from our side to complete this negotiating pro uh, process uh, between uh, Brussels and Tashkent. We also very much looking forward on the visit of uh, our president, His Excellency Shavkat Mirziyev, to Brussels. We received a uh, number of invitations for that purpose. Mm -hmm. And uh, that should also bring uh, new, uh, I would say, uh, results uh, to our bilateral relations mm -hmm. with EU, but also with the EU member states. You also mentioned already earlier on um, the upcoming elections in October. What can we expect from that? Also, um, with regard to like developments between the EU and Asia and, and Uzbekistan in particular. Well, uh, definitely, uh, what should we expect? Very uh, transparent and uh, uh, electoral cycle, uh, which will be uh, in all the norms and standards of uh, 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 such an exercise, where the uh, rise of all the observers and candidates will be uh, safeguarded. Mm -hmm. uh, we are in full contact with many international institutions, uh, for example, uh, Office for Democratic Institutions and Human Rights of OECE uh, is uh, on regular contact and uh, we always see uh, that representative of OECE uh, visiting uh, Uzbekistan. Uh, on my memory, uh, this year, for example, Secretary General uh, Madan I mean, uh, for me, uh, uh, Swiss, uh, Swiss foreign minister visited Uzbekistan. We also uh, seen the um, head of uh, Odir office uh, traveling to Uzbekistan and discussing with our Central Electoral Commission uh, the aspects of our upcoming elections. And uh, that process will be fully transparent, as I said before, because uh, our embassy is also in in contact with uh, different uh, partners here in the European Union, in the Belgium, Netherlands, and Luxembourg. We are very much open uh, to invite the international media, all the concerned parties, to observe how the electoral process uh, will go through. Um, for me, it's difficult to predict uh, what would be the outcomes, but I think. Uh, the main result I know, whoever comes, uh, where we will be elected by the will of our people, uh, will be uh, uh, very much a good partner for the European Union because we take some indeed, indeed uh, very trusted partner of you. Well, I believe that there's a great potential well, in Uzbekistan itself, in Central Asia, but also in the relation between the EU and Central Asia as a partner. So um, I believe that uh, well, uh, this kind of events and discussions uh, greatly co contribute to like um, bring it into the visibility, um, also increasingly in Europe and in Brussels. Um, and we look forward to extending this kind of discussions and talks in the future. So uh, at this point, um, it is a great pleasure for you to uh, for, to, for having you had here um, at this EIS talk. Um, so thank you, uh, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you, Dilia. And uh, we look forward to extending the, the, the dialogue um, with the EU, but also at EIS. So thank you very much. And we hope to uh, see you soon, hopefully live um, at EIS again. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, my best regards to all your uh, analysts and uh, colleagues at the European Institute of Asian Studies. Uh, we are fully appreciate uh, your interest in our part of the world. Uh, we appreciate the analytical reports and uh, your uh, very balanced views on and objective views on uh, uh, our region and specifically on Uzbekistan. That's really a good place uh, in terms of uh, geopolitical agenda. The, as I talk, uh, most of our partners uh, very much in support of what uh, our government, our people are pursuing in the uh, quest for the better life and prosperity. Thanks so much. I appreciate this interview. Thank you very much and see you soon. Cheers. See you.